Good day everyone, it is Caitlin and today we are getting a working woman dressed in the winter of the early to mid 1850s. So it is extremely cold today, which is why I had the fire going and therefore I'm going to get dressed in the parlor because there's no one else in this house and there's a fire in the parlor. So right now I already have on my stockings which are wool, a nice and warm, which are wool. A nice and warm and put on some garters to help them stay up because clearly even by the time I put them on and just walking around the room they weren't staying up on their own. Because it's cold I am going to wear drawers. A lot of women are wearing drawers regardless in this time frame. I just despise them so I will only wear them if A I have to or B it's really cold and I want the extra layer. You'll notice that drawers in this time frame are split crotch. That is to aid in using the facilities when nature calls. Now I wear my drawers underneath my chemise. You could, however, put them on top of the chemise and tuck the chemise in. And you can also put them on top of the corset once we put on that layer. It is personal preference. It is really cold. I'm going to take a few minutes just to pause at the, to pause at the And now for shoes. I'm wearing my American Duchess Eliza's today. These aren't as practical as boots would be, but they work really well and they're appropriate. After taking a minute to warm myself by the fire, I'm going to put on my corset. I'm going to loosen the laces first. But I tend to just pop my corset off into the day instead of unlacing it or even loosening it. So I tend to have to loosen the laces slightly before putting it on again the next day. Adjust everything. And then I'll tighten my laces. You notice I do not have help. It is entirely possible to do this on your own. Um, I don't know quite why everyone assumes you would have had to have a maid or someone to help you get into your corset if you are wearing one, but that is just absolutely not true. It does take a little bit of practice to be able to move your arms that far back, but after a few times of doing it, it becomes very normal. And doing it every day, of course, would be something you wouldn't even have to think about anymore. I tend to tie my laces up front because it's easy for me to see. And that is the corset layer. Next up, I'm going to put on a wool flannel petticoat because again, it is cold today. Usually by this point, it's quite warm. Just like the drawers, the petticoats will all close with buttons. I'm going to put on a corded petticoat. This is just a petticoat with lots of cords or a yarn-like substance that's been sewed into the hem to make it stand out more. It gives you the nice bell shape to your skirts without having to wear a ton of petticoats. And one more petticoat. This time we're going to wear a wool petticoat over top. This is my working petticoat. I wear it even in the summer. It's really nice to have a layer of flame retardant fabric when you're working around a lot of fires in the 19th century. So even if it wasn't winter, I would still wear this. And apparently I did not catch that it's all caught up in the back. I tend to do that. And at this point, we're ready for the dress. Today is going to be a brown cotton print. I could have also chosen a wool, however, my wool early 1850s dress is kind of a nicer wool dress, and that's not something I would use to working on a hearth all day long, so I chose the cotton instead. It does have a collar already pinned in. I could have also used a neckerchief. 
but it does not have under sleeves because we're going to add some wool ones in just a moment. So there's a hook and eye at the waist for the skirt. And then the bodice closes with uh, hooks and eyes as well. The very front of the bodice is gathered up in a fan front style. Very popular in the early 50s. It's a holdover from the 40s, actually. It looks like a bone was catching on something, perhaps a corset bone or something, so I had to adjust a, little, a few things there. And then I realized that my bodice was off center. Finally, all the hooks and eyes get done. And there's the back of the gown. I'm going to adjust my hair very quickly. Sometimes getting dressed, I tend to pull some of my hair out. So make sure everything still looks nice and presentable. And finally, I'm going to add some wool and undersleeves. These are from an 1850s pattern made of wool, and they have been knitted. And they are very nice for keeping your wrist warm when you're wearing open sleeves. And they're very easy to slip off as well once, you're, once it gets a little too warm for them. But that is basically it. That is how to get dressed in the early to mid 1850s when it's cold out. Now, of course, if I wish to make calls upon the neighbors, now, of course, if I wish to make calls upon the neighbors, or in, there's a, it's not quite cold enough for the hood. It did warm up a bit that day. So you see, I took the undersleeves off. So we're gonna wear our normal sun bonnet. If it was extremely cold, that red thing was a wool hood. It was still a bit chilly, so I'm going to put on a wool shawl. This one is edged in a silk trim. And now I'm ready to go. Thank you so much for joining me today as we got dressed in the early to mid 1850s for winter. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. And as always, have a fantastic week, and I'll see you back here on Monday.